Thanks for inviting us in tonight. Boy, you can't turn on the TV or get online without seeing people talking about this Johnson & Johnson vaccine pause. People are understandably concerned tonight. So we're talking with doctors and our verified team to get you the answers that you need. But we want to start tonight's big story with three quick facts to keep in mind. Up first, six women developed a rare blood clot after getting the J&J &J shot. One of the women died. Number two, almost 7 million people in our country have already gotten this Johnson & Johnson vaccine. So the percentage of people with this blood clot issue is extremely small. And lastly, Johnson & Johnson says it hasn't found any causal link between the shot and these blood clots. So that means they can't prove the vaccine actually caused them. So that's a bit of the backstory. As our big story continues tonight, we're going to leave up this QR code at the bottom of your screen. That way you can scan it and get the latest updates on the vaccine sent straight to your phone. After a senior year of high school where she missed her graduation and prom. And not being able to end the year with my friends was just, it stung. And a college career that started online. I was so relieved to get the vaccine because I'm thinking to myself, next year is going to be a better year. And Maya Kislik still feels that way, even after the FDA announced Tuesday it was investigating the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. The same one Maya got at this pop-up clinic this past Sunday at West Park in Carmel. Several of Maya's family members got their shots at the same time, along with more than a thousand other Hoosiers. Everybody is going about their day. Everybody's knock on wood feeling great doing great and they have no concerns. The FDA's concerns about the J&J &J vaccine came after six women between 18 and 48 years old developed rare and severe brain blood clots just six to 13 days after receiving the one dose vaccine. One of those women died. The FDA and CDC recommended pausing use of the vaccine, causing states, including Indiana, to pull it from vaccination clinics like this one at IMS. A doctor we spoke to with IU Health hopes the issues with the Johnson & Johnson vaccine won't cause others to think twice about getting vaccinated. It's important to think not just about the six issues which have, have arisen, but the other nearly 7 million that have it. Health experts say if there's going to be a problem, symptoms would show up within three weeks of getting the J&J &J vaccine. Those issues include a severe headache, abdominal pain, leg pain, or shortness of breath. The first reaction that people need to have if they received a J&J &J vaccine is to not worry. And if you don't have any symptoms, you don't need to do anything. So that's what Maya Kislik is doing, nothing. Instead, focusing on what lies ahead on the other side of being vaccinated. And we can just go about and enjoy life the year that we lost from 2020 to 2021. We've seen a lot of statistics thrown around today about the risk of getting a blood clot following today's J&J &J news. So tonight our verified team went right to the experts to straighten it all out. Let's verify, are you more likely to see blood clotting if you have COVID than if you've gotten the Johnson & Johnson shot? Here are sources, the CDC, the FDA, and two Johns Hopkins University experts, Dr. Panagis Galiatsatos and Dr. William Moss. All our experts say that based on what we know right now, these risk factors are worlds apart. So far, only six women have been identified as having these CVST blood clots. That's out of almost 7 million Americans who have taken the Johnson & Johnson shot. If that number six is, is all the cases, um... Um, then we're talking about, you know, one in a million. Um, it's possible that there are more cases that will turn up uh, in the coming days. Meanwhile, it's a completely different story for COVID cases. The risk of blood clots is much higher, certainly, in individuals who are hospitalized and have severe COVID. The worse your COVID-19, right, so say that you're sick enough to land in an intensive care unit, probability of developing a blood clot's about 31 percent. So that's about three in 10 versus one in a million. Our experts say it's going to come down to a risk analysis when people decide to get the vaccine. But Dr. Galliot Satos tells us that the risk is incredibly low. It's always hard as human beings to kind of conceptualize when you hear a case, it sounds horrible, like your heart goes out. But recognize that case is very low. I always think of the analogy of planes, right? We hear plane crashes. But many of us still recognize that's a low probability. I'm still gonna go out and fly. So we could verify that based on what we know right now, the risk of blood clotting from COVID-19 is much higher than the risk from Johnson & Johnson vaccine. With your Verify, I'm Evan Kozlov, 13 News. 
Pausing the use of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine is having a huge impact on clinics all across the state, including the mass vaccination site set up at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. In a place where speed is everything, the Indiana State Department of Health pulled a fast one. As soon as it learned the CDC and FDA hit the pause button on the J&J &J vaccine, it switched the mass vaccination clinic at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway to the Moderna vaccine. People were texted ahead of time and reminded at the check-in. The majority decide to get vaccinated anyway. They will have to get a second shot of the Moderna vaccine, possibly at a mass vaccination clinic at a time and place yet to be decided. Now, if you are one of many who were set to get that J&J &J vaccine and now need to reschedule, all you have to do is call 211 and the state health department can help you out. You can also text the word vaccine to the number there on your screen and then we'll send you links to help you sign up. Just make sure you text and don't call. And that's a wrap of tonight's big story.